Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My husband used me for a green card. I exposed him and left. Now he's paying the price. My husband and I got married two months ago. We are both from different cultures and ethnicities. In his culture, living with his parents is normal. We had discussed moving in with his parents after we got married, but I wasn't very comfortable with the idea. I was born and brought up in America. My parents moved here in their 20s to achieve their dreams. When I was 19, I moved out, and they supported my decision. So I told him that I disliked the idea of moving in with the in-laws. He told me that it was an important part of their culture. I told him that I respected our cultural differences, but that I wouldn't compromise on this. I wanted us to have privacy, and I had visited his apartment. It wouldn't fit all of us. Now, at this point, I thought that his parents lived with him. He had made it seem that way, too. He had told me that he grew up here. We eventually compromised, and he asked me to try it out for a few months. And if I wasn't comfortable, then we could move out. So I agreed. We had a small ceremony when we got married, but it was beautiful. I moved into his apartment, and his family was extremely sweet. I didn't feel anything was wrong. His mother and he would frequently talk in their native language, and I would be curious. I asked him to teach it to me too, but he would refuse and say it wasn't necessary. I told him that I wanted to be a part of their conversations too, but he still wouldn't teach me. Time passed, and I took a few classes online, but I was still learning. I only understood a few phrases and words. My husband and I both worked. It had been about a month and a half into our marriage, and my mother-in-law kept telling him to get it done. That's the one phrase one understood. When I would look at him, he would just awkwardly smile at me. I could feel that something wasn't right. I would ask him about it, and he would always just blow me off, saying that he would tell me later. As the days passed, my mother-in-law got more anxious about it. I tried asking her, but she wouldn't give me an answer either. I was fed up with it. We hadn't even gone on our honeymoon yet. I wanted to go abroad, but he would blatantly refuse and tell me he was busy with work or make up a similar excuse. One day, I was speaking with a co-worker of mine. She was from the same country as my husband, but I hadn't heard her speak her native language. I randomly asked her if she spoke the language, and she said yes. I asked her if she could help translate a few lines for me, and she said of course. I knew it wasn't right, but I was going to record them. I've lived with them for almost two months now and I don't particularly like being left out of conversations all the time. I knew something was up, and I was going to find out what. When I went back home that day, I did my normal routine. Once my husband was back, my mother-in-law started speaking fiercely to him. She sounded angry. I immediately started recording their conversation. The next day, I met up with my coworker during my break. I made her listen to the recording, and her eyes widened. She didn't know who was speaking. She asked me who this was, and I told her it was my husband and my mother-in-law. She told me to immediately get out of there and call the cops. I was shocked. I didn't know what to say. It couldn't be that bad, right? I asked her if she misunderstood anything, and she said no. She proceeded to explain to me that my mother-in-law was pestering my husband to open a joint account with me and to take note of how much money I had. My jaw dropped. What the frick? This lady, my mother-in-law, didn't speak much to me but acted very sweet. I always thought that she was just a reserved person. My co-worker continued to tell me that my mother-in-law was pestering my husband to apply for a green card. She said that my husband was almost yelling at his mother to keep her voice down and kept explaining that for a green card. He had to show proof that I was able to support him financially. She then told me that she kept screaming at him to get it done. I didn't know how to react. I remembered my husband asking me to create a joint account, and I had refused. I made more than him, but he wasn't aware of that. I wasn't comfortable opening a joint account with him just yet, as I had a few of my prior investment plans that needed to be completed. I hadn't disclosed everything to him. And right now I was thankful that I hadn't. I wasn't aware that he didn't have a green card either. He told me he grew up here. My coworker pulled me into a hug. I didn't notice that I had started crying. She told me to report it to the police and file for an annulment. Divorce was not an option in this case. I went home early that day and packed up my stuff. I had informed my father, and he was on his way. My mother-in-law wasn't home, but my father-in-law was. When I rolled my bags out, he tried to stop me. He asked me what was going on, but I just ignored him. My father had come up by now. He was enraged but was keeping calm because of me. I went back with him to his place. I contacted my father's lawyer and filed a report the same day. My husband called me multiple times that evening. My lawyer recommended not talking to him. This was fraud. One thing my co-worker very clearly mentioned was something my husband had said. His exact words were, Why do you think I married her? Have you seen her house? It's huge. She doesn't know that I don't have a green card. I'll have to coax her into believing my story. We're married now, but we need to wait to make our move. 
Looks like that a whole forgot that annulment was an option. The audacity they had to speak all of this out in the open right in front of me. It's a good thing I have proof. I don't know how long this will take, but I'll update you all soon. Update 1, six months later. The annulment of my marriage has been granted. You should have seen his face when he knew that I knew. I can't believe I got sucked in by him. I actually thought he loved me. I wanted to ask him why, if he actually ever loved me, but the answers were all there in that recording. My lawyer warned me not to contact him during that period. It was better that way. My parents could see how shattered I was over this. I couldn't help but think that if I hadn't recorded them, I would have never known. I would have never thought about this happening or that these were his intentions. I know many of you have asked what his native language is and which country he is from. I haven't mentioned that information because I don't want to promote any stereotypes. Of course, charges were pressed against him and he had to pay for them. There are a few other things I cannot make public. What I can tell you is that he won't get away with it. There are chances that he and his family may get deported. His parents were here on a visitor's visa anyway. I'm still staying with my parents. I don't trust them one bit. I'm very grateful for my coworker. If it wasn't for her, I would have never known, and that's horrifying to me. I'm just trying to move on now. Thank you all for your support. Dana. At first, I thought OP was stupid to just trust the coworker's word, but then I realized I was stupid. Nobody would joke about a situation like this. It's a good thing she got out of there ASAP. While reading this, I was praying that OP wouldn't confront them by herself like in those dumb movies. Good thing my gal is smart and just quietly packed and got out of there. Santa, I feel so bad for the OP. Poor girl. I can't imagine anyone going through a situation like this just two months into their marriage. But on the bright side, it's better she found out now than later. Not gonna lie, it would have been terrible if OP confronted him by herself. These types of people, who knows what they're capable of. For the people saying that she should have done more research on his background or found out more about his family, do you all realize how good he must have been to get her to marry him? OP doesn't seem like a fool either. She followed her gut and instinct and found out what was going on. She even tried to learn their language. Of course, her intentions were good when she did so. But these asses, his whole family were in on it. This is fraud. Good thing she got it annulled. A divorce would have been problematic, Danta, and that is why you never disclose your finances fully. She got emotionally played by him. I hope OP and her family can move on and live a better life. Poor people must be traumatized by this experience. Next story. My brother is 13 years older than me and I have known my whole life, all 19 years, that he would have preferred to remain an only child. We are not close. He has never had time for me, never wanted me in his life or to be in mine. When he moved out, he stayed distant from me. He'd speak to our parents, visit them, but it was like I wasn't there. Over the years, I got used to it. One time when I was like 12, our parents asked him if he would let me stay for a weekend because they were attending an adult-only wedding. He said no, but he didn't just say no. He was clear that he would never want that kind of contact with me. They argued back then over it, not sure how bad it got, but they never asked again and nothing changed between me and him. It always stood out to me that he was almost disgusted to be asked and by the idea that he would need to spend some time with me. He never showed up to my birthdays and never got me anything for Christmas or my birthday. My parents were bothered but always told me once we were both grown, our relationship would be more equal and could grow. I think they wanted to believe that more than they actually did. My brother has been with the same woman for like eight years. I've met her a grand total of two times. Now they're engaged and everyone is all excited. His fiance came over while I was at my parents' house for Christmas and asked me to be her bridesmaid. She brought up how they needed to include me since all of her siblings were bridesmaids and groomsmen. I asked if that was the only reason and she went silent because, I mean, she was asking a stranger for the sake of appearances. So I told her it was nice to offer and all but I couldn't accept and that I wouldn't be attending the wedding. She freaked out and went crazy about how my lack of attendance will overshadow the day and sometimes you go for family. Even if you're not close to you or know the family because family is important, I ended up having to leave my parents' house because they were also unhappy when they heard that I was planning on not going. They told me he's my brother and I should be at his wedding even if I'm not a bridesmaid. Aita? Edit some stuff has come up commonly and I wanted to add some extra details. My brother is very close to our parents. He always has been and they know his fiance very well since they've seen her a lot. I was just simply never included in that. But my brother never appeared to have any hard feelings toward our parents, only ever me. His fiance has admitted she only invited me for appearances sake and that my brother said no to including me in his wedding party. My brother and I look very alike, which is a mix of both our parents. I have seen pictures of my mom while pregnant with me, so unless they really faked those, he's not my bio father. I've had more of a conversation with Redditors posting on this than I've had with him in 19 years. Dana. 
It might be a good idea to expand on what you've written here and get them to read it. Emphasize the hurt and how dehumanizing it is that brother, sister-in-law wants to use you in this way after how he's treated you. Plus point out the obvious double standard on claiming you should do him favors because he's family when he would never do the same for you. Denta, your parents are enabling his appalling behavior. You not having a relationship with your brother is no loss. OP, as the way he's behaved throughout your life, jealous, entitled, and spoiled, means he's not a very nice person. I can understand him getting his nose put out a joint when you were born, but he has no excuse now. You must have been incredibly hurt over and over as a child, and in some ways it must have been difficult for your parents too as they must love you both. But now he's an adult and has reaped what he sowed. You're not his sister nor family because he doesn't want you to be. His fiance will be aware of his feelings towards you and is just as nasty as him, M.O. To expect you to happily join the wedding party where you would have no doubt been made to feel rejected, not worthy to, and then have the audacity to flip when you politely refuse. Your parents need to stop enabling his atrocious behavior. You seem quite level-headed despite the effect this long-term rejection must have had on you. OP. I hope it doesn't affect the various relationships you will have in life. I'm proud of you for sticking up for yourself. Din. I also think it's weird that some comments are saying sister-in-law doesn't know, but after eight years and never buying gifts for birthdays and holidays, never calling or visiting, Never including in on plans for things or events, she knows. Like, seriously, how could she not? Maybe she doesn't know all the logistics, because obviously if he told her how cold he could really be, and they want kids, then him acting this way would be a huge issue. It's not a charming quality to possess as a grown man to make it blatantly obvious that you are incapable of loving an integral family member that literally did nothing but exists. Can you imagine how he would be as a parent if he didn't like his child? Which happens, people. Let's not deflect from the fact that many people can have children and feel nothing towards them but contempt. Anyways, OP, frick that shit and don't let your parents' opinions dictate your attendance. Sister-in-law can frick off because she's a weirdo too. Next story. We live in Alabama for the past week. Our mornings have been 30 degrees and warming up to mid-40s. I don't think we've seen 50 degrees for quite some time, when we were married. He conceded to a request that I made that our two-year-old child during the winter months be adequately bundled up and always wears an undershirt to keep her chest warm and a hat to keep her head warm. That means at all times during the winter, she's wearing a minimum of two layers on her chest and has a hat on her head when she's outside. The reason why I say he conceded to this is because he loves cold weather and it has always been the shorts, hoodie and flip-flops kind of guy during cold weather months. Well, since we divorced, he's basically thrown that out the window and refuses to put an undershirt on our child. On my weeks, she is always wearing one and I always send her to his house fully clothed with one on. When I get her back the next week, he has her dressed in maybe pants, t-shirt, and a jacket. The final straw was this week, I was off work and he wasn't and daycare was closed, so he asked if I could watch her. I said, sure, no problem, just bring her to daycare mommy at normal daycare time to keep her schedule. When he dropped her off, I about blew a gasket because he had our two-year-old dressed in a sweater, nothing underneath it, and shorts. That's it. Took her inside immediately and put some clothes on her and asked him why in heaven's name is she dressed like this. He said that she was only outside for five minutes so he saw no point in putting a full outfit on her. I reminded him that it's winter time and her body is still learning how to regulate temperature and she needs to be covered. She also needed at least a shirt underneath the sweater because what if she got hot and we took the sweater off? She'd be naked. He just shrugged and went about his way saying it's not that serious. I called his mother who I'm still on good terms. I told her what happened and she was furious. She called him and scolded him telling him to at least have two layers on the child just in case. He then texted me back calling me all types of dramatic and what not saying it was uncalled for to talk to his mother. But I honestly felt there was no other way to get through to him. Ada? ESH. You lost it. You have a bit of a control freak in you. No coats with car seats. Safety? We live in northern New York and don't even own a winter coat for the one-year-old. I wrap him in a blanket to carry him out, buckle him in, and throw the blanket over him. The undershirt thing is your problem, honestly. You need to let go of a little control there. As your child walks and probably plays outside, she should have a coat at least with her, but 30 outside a warm sweatshirt in the car would be fine. Skirts expose legs like shorts do, but somehow they're better accepted in winter L ale. I never understood that. If someone wants to wear shorts, then whatever. I'm not saying your two-year-old should, but sometimes that argument isn't worth having with a toddler if you are in a hurry. 
And when you can toss a blanket in the car, you don't actually get sick from the cold and she wouldn't get frostbite that quickly. If he had nothing warm for her at all, that is crappy but her not having it on wasn't. But you don't get to dress her at dad's, and this is how you make co-parenting a nightmare for the next 16 years. Pick out a nice soft fleece blanket that she can be excited about and get two of them. One for your car, alone for daddy's. Denta. He is being straight up neglectful of your child. I don't know how I would get through to him either, but it seems his mom couldn't either as he still thinks he's in the right. Maybe have him speak to a doctor, but yeah, absolutely tough for trying to make him see sense in any way possible. Ida. You sound like a control freak and this sounds like the perfect way to push your child's father out of their life. Make dealing with you so awful they just give up. I'm not sure what your obsession with an undershirt is. When all you're doing is walking from building to car to building, you don't really need to bundle up like you're going cross-country skiing. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.